Hello and welcome to the Seth Joyner Show. What a time to be a Philadelphia sports fan. The Phillies in a battle with the Braves to move on to the NLCS. And of course, your 5-0 Philadelphia Eagles are game by game, slowly but surely, rounded into shape. Let's get into my breakdown. After a slow start to the 2023 season, the Eagles seem to be rounding into shape. The offense started off struggling to find their footing in the passing game. The run game sustained them until they could find their way. Jalen Hurts started the year off with back-to-back sub-195 yard passing games and averaging one touchdown per outing. The last three games, though, he's put up and he's been heating up to the tune of 277 yards, 319 and 303 yards respectively while up in his passing TD average to up around one and a half passing touchdowns per game. And oh, by the way, he's also had four rushing touchdowns. The offense finally, finally saw Dallas Goddard get involved. In the first half alone, he had five receptions for 50 yards and a touchdown. He enjoyed not only his first touchdown of the year, but his first 100-yard receiving day of 2023. Eight total receptions for 117 yards and a 14 yard per catch average. Why did it take until week five to get this weapon activated? I don't know. Your guess is better than mine. AJ Brown continues to be uncoverable. He logged his third straight consecutive 100 yard receiving day, six catches for 127 yards and an incredible 21 yards per catch. And I'd be remiss in my breakdown if I did not shower some props and some kudos on this offensive line for racking up again another big rushing day 39 carries for 159 yards that's an average of four point yards per carry but also keeping Jalen Hurts clean and holding Aaron Donald that bad bad man to one tackle three assists and one pressure all day long well done gents well done on the defensive side of the ball it was a tale of two different halves On the Rams' first possession, they drove the ball 14 plays, 75 yards, and ate up 8.09 of the clock in the first quarter, ending in a three-yard 2-2 Atwell TD reception. That answered the Birds' 12-play, 75-yard TD drive. The troubling part was that the Rams were three for four on third down conversions and one for one on fourth down conversions on that drive alone. The only other drive of the game that they struggled was the third possession of the game. The Rams went 75 yards on six plays that ended with a 22-yard touchdown pass to Puka Nakua. The other five possessions for the Rams, the offense ended in four punts and one turnover on downs, punctuated by Hassan Reddick in his back-to-back sacks. Jalen Carter asserted himself in his increased role with Fletcher Cox and Tui Palupu out, Carter, the front runner, in my opinion, for defensive rookie year of the year, recorded two more sacks, pushing his total to three and a half over a five game stretch. He's projected to finish the year with 12 total overall sacks over the 17 games. The communication and experience of Roby and the aggressive posture implemented by Desai in the second half was the difference in the game, in my opinion. The Rams were one for seven on third down conversions in the second half, which really minimized their overall possessions in the game. Although the stat sheet says they had eight possessions, they really only had seven. And playing against seasoned vets like Stafford, Cup, and -and up-and-comer Puka Nakua, that was a major defensive accomplishment to minimize their chances and possessions to score. That's my Rams breakdown. Coming up next, former Eagles Hall of Famer, analyst, and co-voice of the Eagles radio broadcast on WIP, Mike Quick stopped by to help me preview the Birds' trip up north on Sunday afternoon. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the anticipation of another face card, the thrill of an extra spin, and the pure joy of a jackpot. It's all your favorite games at your fingertips. Plus, get up to $1,000 casino bonus back if you're down in the first 24 hours. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. This is Seth Joyner, top analyst for the Birds. 
I've also analyzed the best auto dealerships, and I drive a Davis Honda. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. Over 300 cars available. And right now, get rates as low as 0.9% at Davis Honda in Burlington. Plus, you'll get two years of free oil changes on every new and used Davis Honda vehicle. See why Davis Honda continues to win outstanding awards for sales and service, including the highest award from Honda, the President's Award. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. Welcome to Bridgeview Partners, where IT and business innovation merge. We're not just another tech company. We're your strategic partner in navigating the ever-evolving digital landscape. Our team of experts tailors cutting-edge solutions to fit your unique needs, and ensuring your success is our top priority. Elevate your business with Bridgeview Partners. Discover the power of partnership and tech innovation today. Contact us now to experience the difference. Bridgeview Partners, where innovation meets excellence. If you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and dependable performance, MidPen Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference. We work harder, we get things done, and we're in your corner. With financial centers strategically located throughout the greater Philadelphia region and new locations in central New Jersey, we're ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Call or visit us today to connect with a professional MidPen banker. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! At Revolution X, we know that fortunes are made in times of uncertainty. Are you selling your investment real estate? Are you interested in deferring your tax with a 1031 exchange? At RevX, we're experts in 1031 exchange planning and the use of passive real estate options using DSTs. Not in the midst of an exchange and want to invest in real estate, but don't know where to start? Revolution X has institutional grade real estate options for any size investor right now. Set up a consultation at RevXWealth.com. RevX, defer the tax, maximize the gain. This segment is brought to you by Davis Honda of Burlington. Welcome back. I'm thrilled to have my ex-teammate and Eagles Hall of Famer, number 82 on the show with me today. Quick Six, how's it going, my brother? I know you at the golf course. I just know it. I can tell by the way you dressed. <laughs> well, yeah, you got me. I'm about to go do it, but uh, you know, figured I'd take this time out to talk to you because, you know, we both love talking birds, so let's talk some birds. Let's do it. So the Eagles got off to a tough start, but seem to be finding their rhythm as a complete team. What excites you and what worries you about this team? Seth, I'll tell you off the bat, what really excites me is what I'm starting to see from uh, these coordinators on both sides, because I think Sean Desai is really starting to figure out the players that he have, that he has on that side of the ball and really starting to move those guys around so that they're able to really make plays. Um, I really love what he did in the second half of the game last week. And, you know, the Rams moved the ball really well in the first half. And in the, in the second half, they made the proper adjustments, and it was a different game in the second half. Same thing with Brian Johnson, the offensive coordinator. I think that they are really starting to hit their strides on both sides of the ball. And that's really what what excites me the roster is a good roster now i think it's just a matter of the coaches making sure that they're on point each week in their plan of attack got you got you okay so as with most teams things begin and end with the quarterback most people were concerned about hurts running the football after 15 runs last week they're complaining about him running too much what's your thoughts <laughs> <laughs> well it's hard listen it's hard to be satisfied and i'm i take the mindset that Jalen hurts takes um, the main thing, let the main thing be the main thing. The main thing is they have found ways to win each week. To me, that's most important. And and how they get to that, that end result, uh, I'm not so picky about. The fact is, they're 5-0. and They're going down to New York to play the Jets. And they have to, like, each and every day prepare the same way that they've been preparing to try and go up to MetLife and take care of the Jets. All right, so I don't envy Brian Johnson, Nick Sirianni, or Jalen Hurts. With only one ball to go around, how do you keep A.J., Devontae, Dallas happy, along with Swift, the O-line, and that second-ranked run offense? How do you do it, man? I don't know how they do it. <laughs> uh, listen, so we have A.J., who's like every week seems like he, he puts up big numbers every week. He's knocking down a record that I set, you know, 100 years ago. Um, and then Dallas Goddard having a big week last week. Is it time for the Slim Reaper 
Devontae Smith to have his day because all of these guys are so talented. Um, you know, you mentioned Swift. First couple of games, it was Swift. It was really all about Swift. And now it, you kind of spread it around. To me, though, when you're a defensive coordinator and you have to go against these guys, what do you do? Because if you stop one, the other one's going to hurt you. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have in those offense. No doubt. So next up are the New York Jets. They have weapons and a defense that's pretty much formidable. Um, what's the yep. game plan versus the Jets? And most important, how did Nick Sirianni keep these guys focused on this week instead of the big game um, overlooking this week, looking forward to the, the Miami game? Well, yeah, this is one of those games that many people call a trap game. Uh, but if you stay true to who Nick Sirianni is and the way he tries to approach each and every week, and he wants his team to get a little bit better all the time and continue to try and improve. And if you keep that mindset that they have, I don't think you overlook the Jets. They know that the Jets are really good. Steph, when we look at the Jets defensively, they are really talented defensively. Up front, they're as good as anybody. You know, Quentin Williams and company, they are so good. They've got two really good linebackers in Williams and uh, C.J. Mosley. That's a formidable defense that are good. They're good at each level of their defense. So I don't think it's a team that the Eagles can afford to look past when the Eagles are still trying to ascend to their best performance. And I don't think they've. I don't think we've seen it yet. Listen, man, it's always a pleasure to chop up some Eagles ball with you, man. I appreciate your time and insight. Enjoy your round of golf today, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I will. Good to talk to you. All right, man. After this break, my betting and fantasy expert, Brad Feinberg, is here to get you prepped for week six. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the energy of being all in. The passion of a perfect parlay and the pure joy of a jackpot. It's another opportunity to win big every day of the week. Sign up for Bet Parks and get a welcome offer today. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. This is Seth Joyner, top analyst for the birds. I've also analyzed the best auto dealerships, and I drive a Davis Honda. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. Over 300 cars available. And right now, get rates as low as 0.9% at Davis Honda in Burlington. Plus, you'll get two years of free oil changes on every new and used Davis Honda vehicle. See why Davis Honda continues to win outstanding awards for sales and service, including the highest award from Honda, the President's Award. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. Welcome to Bridgeview Partners, where IT and business innovation merge. We're not just another tech company. We're your strategic partner in navigating the ever-evolving digital landscape. Our team of experts tailors cutting-edge solutions to fit your unique needs, and ensuring your success is our top priority. Elevate your business with Bridgeview Partners. Discover the power of partnership and tech innovation today. Contact us now to experience the difference. Bridgeview Partners, where innovation meets excellence. J.P. Mascaro & Sons is a family-owned, locally operated solid waste service company in business for over 60 years. You've seen the red trucks with the blue elephant that symbolizes strength and reliability. Mascaro is different than other national brands. Like the birds, Philadelphia is home. They'll take care of all your waste removal needs. They have it all, an experienced workforce, state-of-the-art equipment, a cutting-edge recycling center, and their own disposal facilities. Call 888-MASCARO or visit jpmascaro.com. At Mandrakia Law, we win big personal injury cases, but we always tell our clients up front that those cases almost always hinge on how much insurance coverage people or companies have. At Mandrakia Law, we don't sell insurance, but we're experts at helping our clients make sure they have the right insurance to protect their businesses and families. Do you have the right insurance? Most people don't. For a consultation, visit mmattorneys.com or call 610-584-0700. Mandrakia Law, aggressive attorneys who get the job done. Done. This segment is brought to you by Bet Parks. Welcome back. As the NFL swings into week six, the cream begins to rise to the top. The fantasy and betting begins to heat up as well. Brad Feinberg is here to get you locked and loaded for this week's matchup. Brad, how's it going? Good, Seth. Looking forward to a hopefully a good week six. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic, man. You know, right. okay, so 
Um, are you finding things are finally balancing out or is parity still ruling the day of unpredictability? Well, you know, fantasy wise, I, you know, what players yeah. and what defenses are you feeling this week? Well, Seth, I definitely still think there's a lot of unpredictability. Uh, I mean, it's like more so with the games than the fantasy. The fantasy, I think, is more solid. The game's still always hard. And look, you see like, teams like Dallas losing by five touchdowns. Anything can happen. But look, let's, Seth, let's start with some underrated players, I think, for fantasy this week. Joe Burrow. Now, listen, again, you got to be ready to adjust your thinking. Joe Burrow looked very injured, Seth, with his calf. Last week, okay, even without T. Higgins, looked terrific against the Arizona team that was playing pretty well. This week, he's playing against Seattle in what should be a high-scoring game, Seth. He looked healthy last week, not being priced as a, one of the more expensive quarterbacks. I like Joe Burrow. He looks like Joe Burrow. Uh, running back-wise, Seth, underrated. I'm going to see Roshan Johnson. Now, everyone watching the show, keep an eye on this, okay? Uh, the starting running back, Khalil Herbert, is out. Roshan Johnson left with a concussion last game. I think he's going to play, but monitor this. Make sure he's playing. But if he's playing, he should get an all-you-can-eat workload against a very pedestrian Vikings defense. He's being priced outside of, like, the top 40 running backs. This is a guy who has a chance, in my opinion, Seth, to have a 75-yard game like Roshan Johnson. Wide receiver, Seth, like how could you not? Adam Thielen, he just keeps doing it every single week. And here's the thing about it, Seth. They keep pricing him out of the top 25 wide receivers when all Bryce Young or Andy Dalton's doing is throwing to this guy every single play. He's going against a Miami team, so you know Miami's going to be scoring and winning. So Adam Thielen, why can't he get 75, 80 yards and seven or eight catches? Love Thielen as a cheap price guy. And then defensively, this one, Seth, may surprise you after we saw Sunday night with Dallas against San Francisco. But I'm going to say the Browns defense. Uh, the total in this game is actually quite low. The Browns are the second cheapest defense, Seth. Because of the second cheapest defense, I know Frisco is great, but it's a chance to save money and get some other superstar kind of players. I like the Browns defense. Awesome, awesome. So conversely, what players on defense and what players, you know, for fantasy this week, you know, are you fading mm -hmm. this week? Yeah, Seth, listen, again, don't, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings here, but I'm going to fade Jalen Hurts. <laughs> Not because I don't think he's great. He is great, Seth. But you know what? He's the top-priced quarterback by a wide margin, and I mean a wide margin. You may say he deserves it. I'm not so sure. Again, he's certainly a guy I have ranked high, but as being the number one ranked quarterback, I'd much rather save a few thousand dollars and take Joe Burrow. He's going against Seth. Say what you want to say about the Jets, but their defense is not bad, and I don't think Philadelphia is going to come in here and just put on a 35-42 on them. I really don't. So I'm not paying up for Jalen Hurts this week. Running back, same theme here, Seth. Christian McCaffrey is a phenomenal player. Probably would win player of the year, right, through five weeks. But he is, by a mile, the highest priced skill player this week, going against a very, very good Browns defense. Plenty of times I'm going to like to take Christian McCaffrey, Seth, not when he's so highly priced compared to the rest of the field, going against what I consider to be one of the best defenses in the NFL in Cleveland. Wide receiver, Seth, and I know this guy caught a touchdown last week against the Eagles. But Tutu Atwell is still getting respect. But now with Cooper Cup back, his ship, his ship has sailed, okay? Tutu Atwell had a first really nice four games uh, when Cooper Cup was out. He was a big part of the offense with Puka Nakua. Now with Cup back, no thank you. And defensively, Seth, I'm going to say the uh, Falcons defense. They're being priced as the top five defense. And while I don't love Washington as a team, I think they're decently offensively. Not one to pick up for an Atlanta defense. I think it's very mediocre. All right, and lastly, Brad, this week I'm feeling a little froggy now. I, I need a nice little four-way <laughs> parlay to lay for Sunday, that is. What games do you like this week, Brad? So my favorite game by far, I really like right now. The line's three. You have to lay minus 120, but th that's okay. I really like the Ravens against the Titans. Now, this game's a London game. It's a neutral match game. Uh, look, last John Harbaugh and company have to feel sick to their stomach. They absolutely outplayed Pittsburgh. Just did everything in, in the game except win the game against a very, very mediocre Titans team. I just think I have a significantly better team here. I thought this line should be about a couple points higher. Give me the, the Ravens to come off that loss, to, to get healthy, and beat a very mediocre Titans team like the Ravens minus three. Uh, I'm going to take the Jaguars at minus four over the Colts. I don't think we're going to see Anthony Richardson now. You know, Gardner Minshew, we both know, is a decent backup, Seth. But I just think the Jaguars have shown their chops the last couple weeks, uh, getting their mojo back. I think that win over Buffalo to me was huge. Uh, Indianapolis is a nice story and a nice team. I think they're a little bit outclassed here, uh, and I think the Jaguars win this game by at least a touchdown. 
And I'm Seth, this one I'm gonna have to go like this. Okay, I'm holding my nose, I'm closing my eyes, I'm doing it all, <laughs> but I'm gonna take Daniel Jones and the New York Giants getting 14 uh, points against the Buffalo Bills, or even some 14 and a halfs out there. You either get 14 and a half or 14. I got 14 and a half, but even at 14, I still like it. Look, let's not forget Seth, as struggled as they have so far this year, this still is a team, okay, that did make the playoffs last year. Uh, there's a chance that Saquon Barkley comes back for this game. I just think this line is too high. Buffalo is a team that a little bit of a heckle and jide kind of team. Uh, they're not going to be up for this game. Coming back, traveling from uh, England last week. I think the Giants can keep this one relatively close. On uh, last one, Seth, the Saints right now are minus one pick them area uh, against the uh, Texans. I just think they're the better team, Seth. I do. Uh, Texans a great story, playing really, really well. Just think the Saints manage a way to win a close game here and laying less than a field goal. I like the New Orleans to get the W. That's Brad Fallenberg. You guys bring the fire today. Brad, I appreciate your knowledge and input. Thanks, my friend. See you next week. You're the best, Seth. Thank you so much. Good luck to everyone out there. All righty. We'll close things out with my closing thoughts and predictions for Sunday's Eagles versus Jets matchup after this break. J.P. Mascaro and Sons is a family-owned, locally operated solid waste service company in business for over 60 years. You've seen the red trucks with the blue elephant that symbolizes strength and reliability. Mascaro is different than other national brands. Like the birds, Philadelphia is home. They'll take care of all your waste removal needs. They have it all, an experienced workforce, state-of-the-art equipment, a cutting-edge recycling center, and their own disposal facilities. Call 888-MASCARO or visit jpmascaro.com. At Mandrakia Law, we win big personal injury cases, but we always tell our clients up front that those cases almost always hinge on how much insurance coverage people or companies have. At Mandrakia Law, we don't sell insurance, but we're experts at helping our clients make sure they have the right insurance to protect their businesses and families. Do you have the right insurance? Most people don't. For a consultation, visit mmattorneys.com or call 610-584-0700. Mandrakia Law, aggressive attorneys who get the job done. At Revolution X, we know that fortunes are made in times of uncertainty. Are you selling your investment real estate? Are you interested in deferring your tax with a 1031 exchange? At RevX, we're experts in 1031 exchange planning and the use of passive real estate options using DSTs. Not in the midst of an exchange and want to invest in real estate but don't know where to start? Revolution X has institutional grade real estate options for any size investor right now. Set up a consultation at RevXWealth.com. RevX, defer the tax maximize the gain. If you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and dependable performance, MidPen Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference. We work harder, we get things done, and we're in your corner. With financial centers strategically located throughout the greater Philadelphia region and new locations in central New Jersey, we're ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Call or visit us today to connect with a professional MidPen banker. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the confidence an underdog's covering, the tension before a clutch turnover, and the pride of a parlay paying off. It's another chance to win big with all day action. Plus, win your first $10 bet and get $125 in sports bonus bets. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. This segment is brought to you by Bridgeview Partners. Welcome back. As the birds bid each and every week to keep pace with San Fran and remain amongst the final two unbeaten teams, they look to be rounding into shape. Offensively, the season started off shaky. Great defensive minds challenged not only the head coach, but the new OC and the runner-up MVP as well. Jalen and the offense lean heavily upon the run weeks one through three, but he found his rhythm passing in weeks four and five with back-to-back 300-yard-plus games. We know that this offensive line can dominate the line of scrimmage and that Swift is the perfect match to this running game. But at some point, you're going to need to throw the ball to be able to compete at the highest level and win games. It has to be tough for Jalen at time, a guy who cares for little else than just winning, to keep two number one wide receivers, an elite tight end, and two multi-purpose pass-catching running backs all happy with one ball to go around for them all. 
When A.J. is dominating, we want Devontae to get some targets. If he's feeding the two wide receivers, we wonder why Dallas Goddard is missing from the offense. These guys get so little fanfare, I just want to give them some love because without them, this offense doesn't operate and roll with efficiency the way that it has been. On the defensive side of the ball, the secondary has been ravaged with injuries all season. But I think that Howie and Sean Desai may have finally found the answer at the slot cornerback in Bradley Roby. The longer he has to work with the two starting corners on the outside and the safeties and linebackers, the better he'll get. He's a seasoned vet who, amongst all else, communicates and provides experience at that all-important position. With Sidney Brown soon to come back, that will add some depth and some continued competition on the back end. The backers, Morrow and Cunningham, have continued to play well, but I know everyone is awaiting the return of N'Kobe Dean within the next few weeks. Last week, Cox and Tui Palupo were out due to injuries, but the young guns stood tall and got the job done. The future looks bright at defensive tackles for the Eagles, but they'll need all hands on decks as the season progresses, and I can see BG getting more reps at defensive tackle situationally. He played well in there in spot duty last week. The edge rushers and defensive ends are starting to ramp up. Sweat is always providing a ton of heat and pressure, and Hassan Reddick is starting to look like himself after getting that cast off his thumb. I give Desai a ton of credit. Each week he's had to adjust on the fly, not only because of the opponent, but because of the personnel at his disposal because of injuries. I also give him props for putting his cornerbacks in a more aggressive posture, which I believe will turn the pressure into sacks, create more turnovers, and continue to improve the stats versus the passing game. Special teams does what it does. Elliott doesn't miss, and Covey's return average continues to climb. As far as the Jets are concerned, their defense is legit, no doubt about it. Brees Hall is a home run hitter each and every time that he touches the ball. They've got weapons at wide receiver and tight end, but Zach Wilson is the starting quarterback, and he's yet to prove that he can consistently direct this offense or handle the type of pressure that the birds can and will apply. The game plan is to make Hall a non-issue early, take away the running game, and force Wilson to play the game with his arm and from the pocket. I don't see that happening. The Jets offense is averaging only 18 points per game. The Birds are giving up only 20 points per game. The Birds offense conversely is averaging 28 points per game, and the Jets D is giving up 21. But you still have to play the game. And Herm Edwards say, hey, you play to win the game. I believe the Birds dominate this game early. Eagles win 38 to 14. That's the show for tonight. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next week as we celebrate hopefully a Birds win moving on to 6-0. And hopefully our Phillies moving on to the NLCS and the Birds prepping for their first real test of 2023 versus the visiting Miami Dolphins. Have a good night and go Phillies.